Habitat has facilitated, with the assistance of the government, a land parcels to a group of these families so that NGOs can provide a house. Without a plot of land, many NGOs are not able to provide a house because it's not part of the beneficiary selection criteria set by the particular agency or the donor. So that's where we brought in the assistance from the government through a national land advisor who actually went to all the villages and educated um, the village authorities and connected the NGOs that are catering the needs of the poor and the government catering the needs of these people with provision of land. So 3,349 families have been benefited by getting that land um, converted from grazing land or waste land into residential land. In the year 2010, we, we checked in Kunjangbon, the close to 500 families living on the roadsides. When we all went uh, to this location, we found these families living in a, quite a deplorable conditions. Um, no water, no sanitation, um, water uh, draining into their houses, and the children literally in mud water. TCG's mandate is finishing by July, so we have a very little window to make any difference in 2010. That's where uh, the timely help from the from the New Zealanders, uh, the New Zealand Aid has given uh, $250,000 uh, generous support to uh, UN Habitat in assisting these IDP families. Uh, there were challenges that we, as UN Habitat, uh, faces that uh, technical challenges. That is the design. Uh, after the mandate of TCG, the government considered that it's a recovery phase. It's not an emergency phase anymore. So all this shelter design has to be changed or uh, compromised uh, to 20 by 16, guided by National Disaster uh, <coughs> Preparedness Central Committee. Uh, but the problem is that initially we plan to cover 431 families. But if we increase the design, then of course the number of houses will be reduced due to the budget limitation. But when we looked at the designs and also looked at the standards that were set, we found the amount is not enough. Um, hence the, the Norwegians came and supported the whole carpentry planning. Uh, another part is the land digger issue. Because in 2010, the Township General Administration already plotted the land uh, with a design of 14 by 12. But, uh, since we have to follow the 20 by 16 design, then they will have to replot on the land again. That is a grazing land. And then after replotting the grazing land, uh, they will have to submit the, uh, to seek for the approval of conversion of grazing land to legal land. And it took almost a year for us uh, to go through the normal regulatory channels from VPDC to TPDC, TPDC to District Peace and Development Council, to the Minister of Home Affairs, and to the President's office, and back. So the conversion takes officially two to three years. え、なけちゃんとかよられてるってことで、え、いいやれば草ビーメスをこれちゃんと、え、言われてるのちゃんとで、毎日私たちでこの場面を終わったんで、え、ピッチャーまで。僕はこう、ダパイン 
it's it's been added. It's a complex procedure. Then uh, the lesson then in Kunyang uh, is that uh, you know we have faced so many difficulties, and then at the same time we have to consider the beneficiary as well, because if the project's been delayed for like two to three years, then uh, you might want to raise the questions: where are they going to live, and then how are they going to survive? <laughs> ไอ้ตาตัวเจ๊ยิ่งเด็กกูนี่ตัวเด็กดีเอ็งบอกอยากวางเอาไม่ได้ตัวเจ๊ยิ่งเหี้ยเฮ้ยรู้เรื่องน
ตัวชาหนิเนาะเอางาปิดแล้วรู้ว่าดูหาดูโฮเมเนี่ยกูยังกูซ่อมปิดแล้วกูว่าเนี่ยกูหนีอะไรด้วยสุดท้ายปูน
and to come out with uh, a broader land program, not only looking at uh, the housing, land and protection, but also looking land as a national issue in protect protecting the interest of uh, the poor people.